Hello everyone, uh, this is John Costa uh, here at the Documentary Media Centre. So we're still ploughing our way through our What Box Heritage newsroom, some pre-records and some live conversations would be great. And I'm absolutely delighted to, to be joined by um, Zam Zam um, Youssef this afternoon from Leicestershire Cares, who we've kind of crossed paths with quite a few times. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for having me, John. It's brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. It's, it's excellent you've taken the time. That's, we're absolutely delighted about it. Yeah. Now, the, the first thing I want to ask, because I'm absolutely fascinated by this, is you actually have a title of a heritage development officer. So just tell what? us a little bit about that, because I was so so uh, surprised by your yeah. by your title. Well, it kind of goes perfectly hand in hand with the role that I, I picked. So, well, that was picked for me. So um, I joined Leicestershire Cares as a um, student placement and this amazing project came up and once I've finished sort of like my hours and stuff um I kind of wanted to do some more work with less shakers and obviously wanted me to do some work with them so the project came up and obviously that's where the heritage development officer came into play that's great because again it's like it's you've kind of got into doing something that you were interested in and then like the Why Heritage Kick the Dust project came along at the right time. Yes, it has. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, let, let's dive into that because obviously that's the reason we're going to talk about today because um, the Leicestershire Cares uh, charity actually received some Kick the Dust funding from the Why Heritage. So you, you did the pitch and were selected and you came along and, and did the Dragon's Den. So tell us a little bit about that and the opportunity that you created for a young person. Yeah, so first and foremost, I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of Leicestershire Cares. Um, I wanted to thank Kick the Dust and the National Lottery Players, obviously, and White Heritage, obviously, because without them, projects like, you know, Heritage would not have existed. So thank you. I mean, it would have not have been possible for young people to um, showcase their identities in different ways. So um, in terms of, um, we kind of called our project Taking Hold of Our Her Heritage. Uh, which is aimed to address the stigma surrounding uh, being a care leaver. So pretty much about their identities and lived experiences. And we kind of wanted to give the power to the young people um, so that they can, you know, tell their stories the way they want it to be heard. So that, that was sort of like idea behind it. And um, during the project, we kind of um, investigate complex nature of identity and we co-produced, obviously, with the young people, uh, art of artifacts or like creative writing, poetry, things like that. Um, and photo voices, photographs and stuff. And we, I, I believe like it's, it's been an amazing journey to be honest and seeing the young people from the start to the end of the project has been amazing. And I believe not only did it change the young people, it changed you know, the staff members that was working with those young people as well. It was a journey of self-discovery for all of us. That's, that's amazing because it's, it's, it's a sector as well, isn't it, that is um, often talked about in the media, sort of those yes. in care and care leavers. Um, so therefore it comes with a certain um, stereotype, probably a certain stigma as well. Yep. And so this really was an opportunity to give the, 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 the creation the to the young people themselves to be able exactly. to say, well, this is us, this is who we are and this is what exactly. we, we like and what we do. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That's what we wanted to do. And not only that, um, we had two apprentices, um, obviously giving back to and um, creating opportunities for young people. We had two young apprentices, apprentices, Casey and Lauren, who obviously played a key role in developing and delivering the project and also gained themselves, uh, um, you know, key skills that they could develop during the time, which is like research skills, interviewing skills, facilitating skills. And they kind of worked very closely um, themselves and with other young care leavers. So we work with them closely to identify their skills and the areas that they wish to improve um, sort of and develop further. So that was amazing to see, you know, when Lauren and Casey joined us from the beginning to where they are now. I mean, uh, Casey has actually gone back to uni and she's advocating. She's a care leaver herself. She's an wow. amazing young person. So, you know. It, it, it's it's it has been really a good privilege and an honor, honor to have those two involved in our project. I mean, from, from your point of view, did you find that the young people um, had never really been asked about heritage or what it was or what it represented to them? People just kind of naturally assumed that they wouldn't be interested. 
and then the conversations that were being facilitated suddenly it was like well I want to do this and I want to do that and of course all of those things come under community media heritage yes, cultural identity stuff like that didn't they so you know it's per perceptions it's about challenging perceptions really isn't it oh yes absolutely I mean um I do believe that yeah, yeah to be true and it you know it hasn't been really difficult to attract young people to uh, taking part of the heritage and you know, it shows that once we started facilitating those conversations, that they had loads of information, loads, loads of experience and knowledge to give. Because then they, it is about the lived experience and who's better, not, you know, to tell them themselves. So that was quite amazing. Uh, and we are, you know, at Leicestershire Cares, we strongly believe that lived experiences and voices of young children and young people should be the central guide um, to our work with young people. So we do that is sort of, um, you know, our ethos and values as well. Uh, and we are aware that at times, um, you know, such efforts can be tokenistic in, in different projects and whatnot, uh, which is why we favour co-production model and where young people are actively in, uh, encouraged and supported, you know, to be, um, rather be creators rather than consumers. So that's where the ideas for the projects are made Hence why um, I believe it was a great success that, you know, we had that understanding with the young people. I love that because I was going to say to you, my next question was going to be to you actually about co-production, because quite a few of the people we've interviewed today have mentioned co-production. And I think um, Rachel Ayrton, the uh, uh, from the King Richard III Centre, just said, like, you know, nothing about us without us. And so, yes. I mean, we could probably name between, between you and I, we could name lots of groups in the city um, about different different issues and stuff and, and different people and stuff that, you know, we should be co-producing things with them in order to Absolutely. get using the news. And of course, one of them is is care leavers. It's a really, yeah. it's a really big issue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, because they are, they, they should be a big part of, you know, what they want to say and how they want to say it. And I don't believe no one else should dictate that because obviously if we are giving the, if they are, you know, empowered in, in doing so, that would be amazing for their life and their progress as well. And also, you know, discovering themselves and, and their identities as well. Now, um, we're doing some work at the moment with the Somalian Development Service around young girls and sort of, you know, using smartphones to interview some of their the elders. They call them CCTV. So they're kind of like they said, they pass from their <laughs> mum through to their through to their aunts and other people's mums. Did you find that there was any intergenerational stuff that um, came through on um, that came through when you were doing it? Well, um, we, we, we did have, because they had to go out there and we made a connection uh, to an allotment, which is based in Bronson. That has been really amazing because obviously with COVID, it was quite difficult to carry on things um, online. So uh, we had to be creative and agile. So what we did is we found an outdoor space, uh, which would have been great for young people to sort of like, for their mental well-being as well, to be outside. So we did create um, sort of, we had elderly um, um, Asian ladies that sort of come there to um, to, to the allotment to do some some you know digging and stuff and planting and things like that. So we got the young people with them. Like that. That's great. <laughs> so we we had we had <laughs> yeah. So it, it has been amazing. We had um, they had talks and you could see them exchanging um, stories and things. Um, and we had um, wood um, carving over there as well and cooking over fire. So we've gone back several times uh, mm. with young people. And I believe, and that that was amazing. I mean, to see the way they were communicating with each other, that was that was really good. Brilliant. So one more thing, and, and then I'll let you go. Um, just tell us, what was um, one of the highlights for you of, of, of the projects, having the young people from the WISE um, Why Heritage projects? What do, you th what do you think was one of the highlights? I think the highlights are probably seeing the young people's journey of self-discovery transforming through, you know, this process of, of project. And uh, um, I suppose, um, and seeing them, how comfortable they are in their own skin after and how they've grown in confidence as well and how sure they are about themselves and what they want. And honestly, that has been amazing and a great honor to be part of that project. Um, and of course, with the COVID, obviously with restrictions, we didn't have a lot of time um, to develop it more. But what is amazing is we originally wanted to do a showcase, um, a display of showcase of everything that was created. Um, but unfortunately, we could not do that, obviously, with the restrictions again. So we had to be creative, which means there's we have a book um, which is on the making at the moment uh, with 
everything that we have created with young people and hopefully when that comes out it will end up going to care homes and children's homes and um, schools and youth youth places and things like that so the yeah. stories yeah. that we are told yeah for me that's one of the projects having seen the film and sort of seen yes. some of the products that the guys have managed to produce that it's yeah. that kind of hopefully it'll act as an a, a, a sp aspiration for other young young care leavers as well yes. And yes, those yes. Yeah, to think about well actually if they can do that i can do that as well so for me yes. that's, that's one of the key things now yeah. as 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 a, as someone that's observed what leicestershire care does throughout lockdown uh, on twitter prolific you guys <laughs> are absolutely prolific on twitter you're always doing something you're always <laughs> asking questions getting people involved and stuff like that so if anything i think you've raised your profile during covid during the lockdown probably yeah. more than you would have done which is great and, and i really hope that when you know when things start to open up again that mm. you guys can um, get back to doing some of the great work that you do um you know, right, yeah. right, from, right from your ceo from kieran right right down to the young yeah. people themselves I I think mean, yeah together. yeah thank you i mean that is i think credit uh firstly as a team and credit to uh kieran and charlotte for leading us into that direction and making us you know um norming and storming and stuff and get you know coming up back strong yeah. <laughs> regardless of what has been you know uh, happening so i'm um, yeah, I'm, I'm really privileged and honoured to be part of Leicester Shaker team. Brilliant. Well, listen, Zam Zam, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Speak Thanks. to you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>